guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about what to do if you feel like you're not learning from your medical billing and coding program. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so if you have found yourself in a program for medical billing and coding and the teacher is not helping you, it's a, a fast paced medical coding program and it's just going too fast, you feel like you can't catch up, you feel like you wasted time and you wasted money and you still don't know what to do. You still don't understand how to code. You still don't understand what you're supposed to be doing. And maybe, maybe you've passed your test or maybe you're about to take your test and you're like, there's no way that I know enough to even take this test, but I've got to take this test because I only have so much time. So here's the thing, guys. When it comes to this industry, Medical billers and coders all have to be people who can do their research and who can learn how to figure things out. We are problem solvers by nature, okay? We are problem solvers by nature because we help providers to understand the fundamentals of what they're supposed to be documenting so that way everything that they've done can be clear to us as coders and all of these things. And we make sure that the patients have very good medical records so that they can take them anywhere and that next doctor is going to know exactly what's been done to them. Okay. That's what we do. So we're, we're by nature, we are problem solvers and it may seem like a lot right now because it's just like, Oh, there's so many things, but what happens to people who get overwhelmed and who panic? Cause these are two things that are very common to people that send me these messages. Cause I've been getting a lot of them lately. And I don't know if it's just a whole batch of people that are just graduating or finishing the program that is causing this, but guys, we just have to stop, okay? Just just stop, just take a minute, to take a breath, really. And the thing is, wherever you are in your journey, whether you are still in school or whether you are about to sit for your exam or you're trying to schedule your exam, or maybe you're out and you've taken your test and you've passed, by a miracle <laughs> and you say, I'm not ready for the real world because I don't know what I'm doing. The first thing that we need to do is we need to stop and we need to make sure that we are on a schedule. Okay. That's going to be your first stop because if you're not putting in enough time to study, right. And you're going to compound that with the fact that you have a terrible instructor, you have a terrible program that you're going through. Everything is fast paced and nobody wants to help you because nobody seems like they know what they're doing. Right. If you're compounding that with not putting in additional time yourself, that's just going to make the whole thing even worse. And a lot of people have quit because of that. And it quitting does nothing but benefit the school because the school already has your money. School already has your money. So they did their part. And whether you choose to give it up or not, that's entirely up to you. But some of you are so cavalier with the fact that, oh, it was just a few thousand dollars, whatever. I'm sick of this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it up. If you always run from things, you're always going to be running from things. You're always going to be running from this problem or that problem or this career or that career. And it, even if you're trying to figure out a career that you want to do and you, by chance, <laughs> got into this one. And you're thinking, wow, this wasn't what I thought it was going to be. This is a lot harder. The challenge is there, obviously. But the challenge is part of the appeal as well. Because if it was easy, then everybody would be able to do it. But not everybody can do this. Okay, so that's what we need to, to think about first. Is that not everybody can do this. And if you got into, a, got into this career field, there was a reason for it. Trust me. Because medical coding finds people. It found me. <laughs> it found me. Because I sure as heck did not know anything about it. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know that this field even existed. Okay. So again, if it found you, we need to just go with this. Sometimes in life, things happen to us. Like careers, choices, and things like that. And this is where we're meant to be. But if you run away from it because it got a little bit hard... That's what's going to make you not be able to fulfill your potential. Okay. So let's just go with this. Number two, let's stop quitting. Let's stop quitting. Stop quitting. Because there's, again, a lot of people that it's so easy. I don't have time for this. I'm just going to quit. No. You have to tell yourself no. 
And sometimes that's the hardest thing to do is tell yourself no. Tell yourself you're not going to quit. Tell yourself that you're not running, that you're going to face this head on. So we start off with making sure that we're putting in the appropriate amount of time, right? Which I know I didn't get into, but I'm going to get into that here in a minute. But we need to put in enough time for our studies, regardless of whether what is happening with the school. Okay, regardless of what's happening with the school, you got to let that go. Okay, your your if your teacher is is not a good instructor, they're just there, just proctoring from a book, then you don't need to worry about that. You need to start learning this on your own. Well, that's impossible. I can't. Yes, you can. And you know how I I know that you can because a lot of people do it, and I wouldn't have the independent study list out the independent study video the link is in the description box below no i will not give it to you because it's in the description box below it's in the description box below it's got all the whole syllabus yes it does have older year workbooks no you don't have to use the older year workbooks it's just meant to save you money now with the books that you have maybe you have the books with the school and maybe it's maybe it's the AAPC books, right? The AAPC, ICD-10, CM, and all those books, right? Um, maybe you have that one for your ICD-10, CM. Me personally, hands down, I will always recommend Optum Coding. Not an ad for Optum, but Optum Coding books are the most fantastic books ever when it comes to coding. And the ICD-10 CM book, the Hicks Picks book, and the ICD-10 PCS book, you can all use these. Regardless of which coding exam you're taking through AHIMA or AAPC, both of them will allow the ICD-10 CM, the um, ICD-10 PCS if that's on your test, and the Hicks Picks book from Optum. They will allow those. The only book that we all have to have the same one of is the AMA CPT Professional Edition. And that's going to be expensive. It's always going to be over 100 and something. Always. You can't find that unless you look on like eBay or something. You might get it for a little bit cheaper. But, you know, there's going to be those books that you need. And the books that you use, believe it or not, are going to be the key to a lot of this too if you're not learning. Because it may be the books that you're using that's causing you not to learn. Now, if you're learning from a Bucks book, the Bucks series books, me personally, I can't recommend those. I don't personally like them. That's me personally. Because I have those books, I've looked at them, but just the way that they explain things, it's like they're explaining it to somebody who has experience and somebody who already knows. And it's not the fault of the author, it's just maybe the way that they wrote it, you know? Um, but to me, when it comes to new people and people who need a little bit more help to learn medical billing and coding, the books that I recommend, again, description box below. Say with me, description box below, right below, right below. You see where I'm talking? You see the little description box starting? You click there and you'll see a whole thing, right? All the things that I put. And it's in all of my videos, right? All of my videos. And when you look there and you see the ICD-10-CM and ICD-10-PCS coding handbook with the answers by Nellie Leon Chisholm, that is the number one book for learning ICD-10-CM and ICD-10-PCS. Now, let's say for example, that you are learning, you're taking the CCSP, the Certified Coding Specialist Physician Base, or you're taking the CPC, the Certified Professional Coder Exam. You can skip all of the ICD-10-PCS questions and just learn on ICD-10-CM. It is going to teach you everything that you need to learn, and it's got all of the answers in it too. Now, you can find this book, abebooks.com. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it on eBay. You can find it anywhere you find your books, okay? Shop around. Look who's got the best price. Don't just go out there willy-nilly just trying to buy anything and everything and, oh, it's 100 and something, oh, it's 100 and something. It don't matter. It does matter because they all add up on these books, okay? So make sure that when you're shopping around, you get the best price, Abe Books, abebooks.com is wonderful for having cheap books, okay? But you get that book and then you get the CPC study guide. Now, CPC study guide may already be part of your program, so that's fantastic. What you need to do is you need to start working through that. And I'm looking at you, my Ahima people, 
if you're taking the CCA, CCS, or CCSP, you can still practice with the CPC study guide. And you may be thinking, well, boo, that's a CPC study guide. But it does have the same CPT code set that we all use. And AAPC did a fantastic job. That's why I recommend those two books because they have all of the answers, not just some of them, not just the odd number answers, <laughs> um, but they have all of the answers. They have really good explanations. There's just a few scenarios in, this, in the CPC study guide that I, the codes, uh, but for the most part, it's, it's, it's got it. It's got it. And it's great for new people. So let's make sure that we've got the time in, we've got the right tools. You get the right time and you get the right tools. Now we're gonna start cooking with grease, okay? So now, we've got all of these things. We've got them all going right. So we're taking that negativity out of our head of the teacher didn't teach me, I didn't learn, I got gypped, I got this. No, 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 no. Because none of that is gonna matter when you get out in the real world. None of that is going to matter when you're out there trying to learn. Okay, none of that. Now, the next thing you got to do is you got to start working with the books. And when you run into a problem, when you run into something that you just don't understand, whether it is mother baby, whether it is cardio, whether it is ortho, whether it is any of those, those three big ones I say, because those are the ones that get a lot of new people. Um, confused because it's they're not the easiest to understand you got to have some you got to have some knowledge on those ones because it does take a lot but it's not impossible but you put that aside for now you run into any problems with those the first thing that you need to do is you need to get into those guidelines the ICD 10 CM coding guidelines you can download them for free the current year version the 2024 so maybe if you're using a 2023 edition books and you're trying to learn and you say, well, Blue, um, I don't have the 50, 50 something, 51, $52 for the ICD 10 CM book right now because um, Optum has their books on sale, the 2024 books for 55% off. So it's like $51 or $52, something like that. And um, you don't want to wait until August when they really start to drop in price when they get like $25, $27, something like that. They get really cheap, guys, and so that's what you got to keep your eyes out for. OptumCoding.com, not an ad, but OptumCoding.com. And uh, you want to go to Best Deals, okay? Under Medical Coding Specialty, you'll see the, the little drop-down box, and it'll say Best Deals, and that's when you can really start looking at those. But you get those books, and you start practicing with them. And like I said, when you get stuck, when you get stuck, you either go to LinkedIn and you post the exact question, not a whole big old thing about complaining about how your teacher didn't teach you, how you got into this fast paced coding program and how they stole all your money. No one wants to hear it. Get right to the question. You need to get right to the question. And these are people who will mentor you, who will help you for free. Okay. These are people who will help you for free. So because they are helping you for free, you need to, one, be grateful, be grateful, be gracious, and you thank them, okay? Number two, you got to make sure that you're checking, you're double-checking the answers, or you're looking to see how did they arrive to that answer. So that way, you can start learning to do your research, and you can make sure that it is correct. Because sometimes when I see some of these uh, these chat boards, whew, some of those answers, I'm like, I don't, I don't know who taught you coding. I don't know who taught you coding and you're out here running your mouth like you know and you don't know okay there's a lot of people who do that they love to do that especially with the credentials too and i'm like please sit down please sit down because you clearly don't know <laughs> there's people out there telling people oh you you should get this credential that credential i'm like you have no idea what these credentials are about and, the, and it shows okay uh so always verify always verify when you're out there asking people and again, you thank them. Don't be ungrateful, okay? Now, if you say, well, Blue, I need a little bit more help than this. I, I'm i getting all these different answers and, and nobody seems to make sense and that kind of thing. And I just, I need somebody to sit with me. Then you need to pay for a tutor, okay? Now that's putting out a little bit of money from your pocket, but sometimes that is what you need. Now, I'm not trying to sell tutoring services, okay? That's not what I'm trying to do. Cause like I tell y'all, my calendar is currently booked till the end of August. I am not taking on any new clients until September. 
And not only that, uh, my calendar is still closed right now and I'm not going to accept any bookings uh, for September appointments until August. So if you're interested in a session with me, again, my rate and contact information is in the description box below. That way you can uh, reach out to me if you're interested. But sometimes maybe somebody just sitting with you and explaining it to you one-on-one, -on -one, maybe that's what you need. But make sure that when you do uh, get with this person that you have an open mind and that you explain to them specifically what are your needs. What do you need to know? Because they're, don't expect them to understand, you know, your question or understand what you're trying to do. Because not everybody is, not every tutor is built the same way. I usually take a few minutes to kind of listen to what's going on so that way I can kind of figure out, okay, how can I help this person? Because that's my approach to tutoring. Everybody has a different approach to tutoring, okay? So that's just something that you got to know. But that's something that you have to do. It's, it's better to spend that money and invest that money in getting a good tutor, getting somebody to help you to understand, than you just running around wasting energy um, on, oh, oh, my teacher didn't teach me. Let go of what's gone, y'all. Just let go of what's gone. You can't go back, but you're here now. And that's what you can do. If you're not learning from your co your coding program, take your power back. Take your power back. Make sure that you're practicing with these books 20 hours per week. Say it with me. 20 hours per week. It, there is no excuse. Even if you have a full-time job, a family, kids, farm animals, whatever. You have the time. Three and a half hours per day. Half an hour in the morning, half an hour at lunchtime, half an hour on your way home, right? You're driving. You could be listening to something. And then you come home one hour, take a break, and then you do another hour. That's three and a half hours. You do that consistently for five days, that's 17 and a half hours. Then you have two and a half hours on a Saturday or Sunday. And then the rest of the weekend is for you. You don't even have to look at the books. You don't have to touch the books. You don't have to do nothing. It's those people that say, oh, well, I can do that and then I can do more. No, take a break, take your break. So that way your brain can have time to process everything that it's doing. And if you are being meaningful with your time and focusing your time, working through the workbooks, because a lot of you tell me, oh, well, I haven't really done anything in the workbooks, but I don't understand. So how do you ever expect to understand if you're not actually doing the practice? Come on, people. Let's think about this. You have to practice. You have to listen to the guidelines. You have to read the coding guidelines, okay? Because I'm not going to explain how to listen to them anymore. But if you want to read them, reading the coding guidelines is going to make you a faster reader. This is something that is going to be critical for your success as well, whether you're about to take your test because you have to be a fast reader, right? You have roughly, um, if you're taking an AAPC test, you have two minutes, 40 seconds per question, right? Um, with AHIMA, depending on which test you're taking, it's still roughly two minutes per question, two minutes, 20 seconds average per question, right? But it could be anywhere between that time, but you always want to kind of figure for two minutes, all right? Two minutes per question. So that's something that you have to make sure that you are like, okay, we got this, we got this, we got this. Because you can do this. You absolutely can. And again, you have to let go of what's gone. You cannot sit there and just stew about the fact that you got into this fast-paced medical coding program that took all your money and now you just don't know what to do. Because running around, uh, leaving nasty messages. Now, I understand that some people, it's not me that they're directing this at, but it's just the fact that they're putting that energy out there I don't like. So I always delete those comments because they'll put in big, big, bold, nasty letters. Oh, I don't understand this and I don't get it. And okay, you don't get it. I understand. <laughs> then you got to do what you got to do. You know, you, you got to, you got to just make sure that you get yourself together. Okay. <laughs> That's all you got to do is get yourself together because again, everybody gets it. Everybody gets a point where they don't understand something and they get very frustrated. I always talk about the time that when I was studying for the CCS exam back in 2021, I had the outpatient side completely down, <laughs> coming from 13 years of experience at the time, right? 
no no big deal no problem right I, I got this right so I'm over here I passed that CCSP with flying colors cool and then I said well you know what I really do need to get the mastery medical coding certification because it's time and even though I'm not working in the inpatient side I should still have this because I know enough to get around right it's like knowing enough Spanish just to get what you need <laughs> uh, but it's it's when you have what I have, which is a YouTube channel, Patreon channel, and I do tutoring, coaching, and all these things, it's good to have it. It's good to have it, right? It, it makes the whole package complete. Okay, cool. So let me go ahead and do this. Well, there's times when I didn't understand what was going on in the inpatient for ICD-10 PCS. ICD-10 PCS is different, right? You have repairs. Repairs are repairs are repair in CPT. But in ICD-10 PCS, it's something completely different. So I was just like, oh, I don't get this. There was times when I was just like so tired and I would get done with the live show because I was doing like live shows like five days a week back in 2021. <laughs> I was doing a lot of live shows back then because I was like, oh, people like it and they, they watch and we can have this long conversation and you know, whatever live conversation that would get long. <laughs> uh, but people, people like it, you know, some people don't like it, but you know, long form content is not for everybody, but there's, there's other YouTube creators that go way longer. Like Rick on his channel, think like a horse. I know I always talk about Rick, but Rick is hysterical to me. And sometimes I will be listening to him and cracking up because he'll talk for hours and the people like he'll have, he'll record a show at night and they'll be talking on all kinds of stuff. And I'll just be listening to him and, and, you know, doing my thing. And I'm just hysterical laughing. But he's like, you know, y'all are keeping me on here for hours and it's no problem, you know. And so I was like, hmm, you know, <laughs> so now I don't feel so bad with my with my long form content, you know, being an hour and a half when I do a live or almost two hours sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, what are you going to do? Anyway, so I would do live shows every night in 2021. Then I would get off the live and I would go and I would... um get myself together and then I'll go take a shower and then I would get into the books, right? I'd get right into it. And then I would get so frustrated because I was just like, why am I not getting this? Because I would start off strong and then I would like, I would start getting the stuff wrong and I'm like, why can't I get this? What is wrong? And it was because I was studying longer than one hour at a time. And, you know, I would get mad. I would throw my pen because I, I don't throw books. <laughs> I love books too much, but a pen is small enough that I could throw it, you know? Um, I don't normally throw things, but at that point I was so frustrated. So trust me, trust and believe when I tell you that I understand what you're saying when you're frustrated because you don't understand. I've been there. Okay. And like I said, working through the workbooks, working through, because I was studying for ICD-10 PCS, I would get that Optum book and in the back in Appendix M, and a lot of people don't know this, Appendix M has 388 procedure codes that you can look up with the answers. And so that's what I would do. I would be looking through that. And then once you get through those 388 procedures, trust me, you'll be proficient with looking up codes in ICD-10 PCS. And it is the same thing that you will get proficient with if you are going through these workbooks. You go through the two workbooks, the ICD-10 CM and ICD-10 PCS Coding Handbook with the Answers by Nelly Leon Chisholm and the CPC Study Guide. You get from point A to point B in that book and you make sure that you go through from cover to cover you make sure that you go through all of those questions you will be proficient if you don't understand a question you put a pin in it and you move on do not sit there and spin your wheels because again that's not going to help you all it's going to do is aggravate you even more and you're already aggravated because you feel like you didn't learn but you have to stop giving up you have to stop quitting you have to stop running Putting a pin in something that it's, it's, you don't understand it until you can come back to it later and look at it again, cool off for a little bit, come back to it, look at it again. If you have the answers, which of course, if you're working with those two workbooks that I recommend, you will have the answers. Look at the answer and reverse teach yourself. Look at the answer and look up that code or look up that uh, procedure code and is try to figure out how did they get to that and then if you can do that that's how you start teaching yourself and if it still doesn't make sense that's when you start posting your question 
Just post a plain question on LinkedIn and people will start to answer you. People will answer you. But don't sit there and complain. Oh, my teacher didn't teach me. Because trust me, the, the second that I see somebody doing that, luck. Because I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. That's a waste of time and a waste of energy. I'm just saying. And there's no time to waste. Stop wasting time. Stop running. Stop quitting. Get up. Get knocked down. Get up. Get knocked down. Get up 99 times. <laughs> Get up 100 times, get knocked down 99. Get knocked down 99 times, get up 100 times. There you go. <laughs> Just keep going. And that's all you can do is you got to keep going. But again, feeling sorry for yourself, quitting, complaining, doing the loud uh, uh, big bowl letters. No, 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 no. We got to stop doing that, folks. We got to stop doing that. Accept your destiny. Accept that this field found you. Accept it. And don't give up on it. Keep going. No matter how many times you want to quit. Keep going. And even if you have to curse the whole way. You keep going. Okay. Because there's no sense in quitting. That's the worst thing you can do yourself. Because trust me. I get the emails from people who um, send me those messages all the time. How they regret quitting so many years ago. I'm just saying. So with that said, I'm going to wrap this one up. Best of luck to you guys. And if this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see y'all again. Bye.